Carissimi amici, I told you I had a surprise for you, and here it is. Il famosissimo, the very famous Michael Cimarusti, head chef and owner of the Providence Restaurant in Los Angeles. Michael, by the way, used to watch my show when he was a kid, isn't That's it right. true? That's right. Michael, I know that your specialty is fish. Why don't you tell us what you're about to make for All us? All right, so we're going to make Alaskan halibut today. Okay. And we're going to make it with a Yukon gold potato and chive blossom. All right. So we're going to start out the process just by seasoning the fish. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to talk about the, the quality and the freshness of the fish. And you can see just by the, the, uh, the nature of this piece that it, the high of it is really in excellent shape. It has, um, you know, beautiful color, nice and translucent, and it holds its shape. Is there cayenne eat. that you're adding? A little bit of cayenne. I don't want to use white or black pepper with this because it wouldn't look nice on the, on the surface of the fish. And also the cayenne, based on the fact that it's a chili, will give us caramelization. Now, I noticed that you added the extra virgin olive oil yeah. instead of using extra light. And on top of it, the pan is hot, the but the nice olive and hot, oil yeah. is not hot. You just want to right. almost to braise the fish. Exactly. We're not gonna, we don't want to cook the fish at too high a temperature at this point, uh, actually at all, because halibut is a, a fish that is very, very low in fat. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, if we, if we give it too much of a crust, give it too much texture on the surface, it won't have that lovely sort of, um, that lovely sort of texture in the center. Now, listen, I got to ask you something. They tell me that you're a head chef. I bet that one time or another you actually used to cook. Uh, yeah, I used potatoes. to cook. Yeah, that's right. So today, uh, in order to uh, to make the garnish, we're going to use these beautiful Yukon Gold potatoes. And it's important to use a good potato. Don't use Idaho potato with this recipe because it won't give you the desired results. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is just square it off. You can save all this. Maybe make fries for your kids or something. And um, so we have a nice, clean sort of uh, shape. And this will make it much easier for us to dice a potato. So now what we're going to do is it, we want to make it fairly small. So you're going to practice with this because it, it doesn't necessarily come naturally. But, but with a little bit of practice, you'll see that you can do this quite easily. So we just can make a nice dice like that. And then we'll pile the potatoes up and uh, make what they call allumette in France, like that. And then we just dice them through. And then we get a lovely uh, sort of square shape. And we don't want them too big because we want the, the overall sort of appearance of the dish to be nice and elegant. And, and they'll uh, cook fairly quickly. Oh, they'll the cook very quickly. And actually, this is a, that's an absolutely crucial part of the recipe is proper cooking of the potatoes. So then we can just let them sit in a bowl of ice water or a bowl of cold water, actually. Now, let me ask you, because when we were talking before and you were telling me about the fish, you were very attentive in telling me how slow you like to cook it. Yeah, you don't want to cook the halibut too quickly. As a matter of fact, at the restaurant, we cook this fish uh, halibut at 118 degrees Fahrenheit in a special oven that we have. How long is it before you turn it? Uh, just until we see nice color on the fish. We want a good, like, yeah, sort let's, of tan let's caramelization. Because yeah. it's the other thing that... To me, when they told me you were going to do this, I said to myself, this guy is crazy, but you're yeah. going to be making a foam? Uh, well, yeah, espuma. I like to call it espuma. So why do you make this foam uh, espuma? Is a four-letter word nowadays. So, <laughs> so it's very simple. We just, lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice, which is, you know, it's very important to use fresh squeeze. Don't, don't use the, the little plastic yellow lemon you see in the supermarket, and sugar. So a two-to-one ratio. So if you have two cups of, of lemon juice, you use one cup of sugar. You can scale the recipe up or down any way you like. And as it'll simple come, as that. Yeah, it'll work. And now what we want to do is bring, bring this up to nearly to a boil, about 180 degrees. Okay. And then once it does that, you can pull it off the fire, and, and it's ready to go. And you can, you can then go back to it and reheat it for service at any point. Uh, you just don't want to let it boil. That's a key that's thing. That's the part that I love the most. All right, so here we have nice color on the halibut. We flip the halibut over gently. I would like, you know, if the camera can see this, the way in which you actually touch the fish. You <laughs> touch the fish as if it was a baby. I yeah. mean, there's a respect that you have for the ingredients. Believe me, at the restaurant, it, believe it or not, I cut the majority of the fish at the restaurant. I butcher it from whole. From, from, I, from I whole. believe it. I, and, there's and, a sensitivity just in the yeah. way in which you were touching it. Uh, tell us about this butter. What are you so doing now we're going to add butter, and we're going to take the, the heat of the pan down. And this is a, this is a very important step. Um, there, you know, there are two ways you can do this. You can either do it this way, which is, which is what I recommend, where you arrosé the fish with the butter, or you can, you can take the fish out of the pan once you've seared the second side for a second, and then, you know, you, put it, you can put it on a plate. If you have a gas oven, just the heat, of the, uh, the heat of the pilot will be enough to finish the fish. For the people at home that would like to try that, if you were to do it in the gas oven, how long should you keep a piece like this of fish, about three, four uh, ounces in serving, in the oven until it's ready to the... Uh, a perfect uh, probably about 15 to 20 minutes it That's will take it. a while but you know you be patient because I, I promise you the end result will be much much better so and this and is a richer flavor that you have with the butter but it's That's not right. necessarily the way we need to do it at. no you don't need to do it this way you can do it very very slowly in the oven and that works as w that works just fine as well so now I, I'm keeping the, the pan if you notice it's not even on the fire at this point and the reason for that is that I notice that the pan is a little bit hot and I don't want to I don't want to overcook the butter because no. it, these potatoes you got them hanging around you tell me you're gonna be making a sauce later but what am I gonna do with these potatoes Okay. Water. So now here we go. We're going to put them in a pan, in a saucepan. Yeah. 
And uh, the only thing that we need to add to this at this point is salt. And we want to add you know, enough salt so that you, you, you get the flavor of the salt, but you don't want to add too much because we're saving this broth to make the sauce for the dish. It's a very simple dish. It really, we have potatoes. No, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. I don't get this one. You got them in water. Yeah. You got potatoes in water. Well, yes. You put salt, you're going to make a sauce. You come to my show and you're going to show me water. I know, water? I'm sorry. I know. It's like food from the gulag, but uh, you know, I promise you, at the end, you'll see it's very elegant. You know, I didn't know your place and your fantastic yeah. your food is, so I know to trust you, so I'll yeah. go with you. Okay, so now at this point, our halibut is ready. Now, okay. so if I gave you this piece of halibut to eat right now, it would not be ready, actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the fish out of the pan, and we're going to let it sit here on the side. You can keep it in a warm place, okay. and uh, in about 10 minutes, it will be ready, and it'll be a perfect flake. And that's really what we want, is the, the fish to be translucent in the middle and, and uh, have a nice texture on the outside. Okay. So, so now, lastly... Now, forgive me before you go there. Go ahead. Because this is very important to me. Usually, I've seen this technique done with meat. Yes. I mean, with meat, it gets done all the time, the little rest. But you're saying that in this particular case, is it typical of every fish, or is it just this particular type of fish no, that has such a dense meat? it's typical of, of most fish. You know, because here's the thing. Um, if, if I were to cook that fish until it was in the pan and until it was absolutely done in the center, it yes. would be dry. By the time you got through this portion of fish at, your t at the table, it'll be overcooked, and that's not what we want at all. What we want is to bring the fish just to the point where it's nearly done, let it finish slowly like this, and then just with a quick reheat, it's perfect when but it gets But for to people the table. at home, when they do this at home, say for example they're cooking for a group of six, seven, yeah. eight people, how do they make sure that this one is warm by the time you bring it okay. in? What kind of a trickery perfect, would here's you... A, a, the best thing that, that, and all the cooks in our kitchen, they have these on their sleeve, okay. is a cake tester, an, an Atiko cake tester. It's just a 99 little cent thing you can buy in any kitchen store. And what you'll do is you'll take that and stick it into the center of the fish. And first of all, you'll know right away, if I, you put it in the fish, if the fish is not done, it'll stop almost immediately. If the fish is just right, just where it needs to be, it will go in, you'll feel a little bit of resistance, and then the, the cake tester will pass right through. And then the other thing you can do, and this is an old trick that you know the French and the Italians and all the old chefs now, you put, the, you put that, that tester in there, it could be a skewer or something like that, and then you just touch it to the bottom mm -hmm. of your lip or to your wrist. Yeah, I and used if to, it's I just used slightly warm, the fish yeah, is ready. I, I am one of the, you notice the accent, I would yeah. like to tell you this linguistically <laughs> yeah. driven, it's me doing the experiment yeah. and not working out. Now, let's go to the spoon. Huh? Okay, here we go. You've got so this nice and all. This is the mixture, by the way, way of the lemon juice and the sugar. You right. brought it to a nice uh, uh, heat and now you're going to use an immersion, immersion blender. blender just with a regular blade. Let's and see what happens. So there. here's what we do. We just put it in there and you start to buzz it and the aeration that the uh, burr mixer brings to the sauce will create these beautiful fine bubbles on the surface of it. And so this is, you know, um, this we can't, I came to the sauce but it was really sort of a happy accent and I was trying to figure out a way to bring like just a very simple, very clean flavor of lemon to a plate without having to reduce it and add butter and add oil and everything else. And so I had this mixture of lemon and sugar that I thought tasted good. I brought it over to the burr mixer and I started doing this, and this is what happened. And the amazing thing is that it'll hold like this for five or ten minutes. The one thing that uh, is astonishing to me is how the foam actually is yeah. rising. This, is there something in the sugar that there, creates this chemical situation? There's something in the lemon, which is, is lecithin. And uh, it's found in many things. Carrots have a tremendous amount of lecithin. And uh, what lecithin does is it, is it breaks down the surface tension that, that, that you have in liquids, and it enables these bubbles to form in home. Now, for those of you watching at home, I don't know if you noticed this, this is not just a man who puts things together. He actually wants to know what happens in the texture of everything that he does. And I think that is really what happens when you become so passionate. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get ready here. When we come back, we're going to show you exactly how to assemble this dish in the same style in which he does it at his restaurant, Providence, in Los Angeles. And we'll help you turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Stay with us. What we're going to show you now is actually how to plate this wonderful dish. And you should know that Michael, this restaurant, Providence in Los Angeles, always does this with every single dish that comes out of his restaurant. So why don't you show us exactly what you're about to do? What's in that pan? It's, it's actually the water from the potato. What yeah. do you do with it? So this is the potato broth. Once, we, once the potatoes are cooked, we drain it out. We add it to a pan. Mm -hmm. We reduce it down a little bit. What happens is the starch comes out of the potatoes while they cook, and then it goes into the broth. And I as give you when a you challenge. Boil it, I give you two minutes to put this thing together okay. and still be cool, calm, right. collected, and elegant at the I same time. I will try. So here we go. So we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of our cooked potatoes to the broth. Okay. And um, you know, if you're serving it as a main course, you might want to add a little bit more. But if you're serving it as a first course, a small amount is fine. And then what we have here is the green part of scallions that are cut on a fine bias. Excellent. And I soak those in ice water for a little while just to make them curl up. And it also takes some of the pungency Beautiful away. Beautiful color they kept yeah. as well. And then we're going to add some of the white part of the scallion as well. 
And this is just a blending process to exactly. get all the uh, flavors marinate together, but so softly so they still maintain a certain individuality. Exactly. And so now we just want to bring the whole thing up to temperature, bring it up to a quick simmer, and then we'll be ready to put it on the plate. But before we do, of course, like like always, we want to taste it. Because if it doesn't taste good to you, it won't taste good to your guests. Excuse me. Why is it that you get to taste it? I just get to look at Please. you. Please. Oh, this guy. He gets into my kitchen. Yeah. He gets to taste. I don't. Mmm, fantastic. Pretty good. So now we're ready to plate. So I have a nice white bowl here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by just spooning some of the potatoes and the scallion down into the center of the bowl. You don't want too much sauce. A little bit is enough. Mm -hmm. um, maybe two spoonfuls like that. It's very easy to plate this dish. There's no, there's no real must to it. So then we're going to add uh, the piece of halibut on top. Just okay. sort of let it settle in there like that. Can't wait for the spuma now. Yeah, now we have the espuma, which I buzzed up earlier, but you see the, the foam holds quite well. Wonderful, wonderful. What an effect it has. Yeah, and it just brings across a, a nice bit of acidity to the dish, which is very important. So we're going to put that right on top of the halibut like that. And, uh, and then we have these gorgeous chive blossoms, which your producer <laughs> picked from her pea patch. I was very happy to see them. I'm oh. going to sprinkle those over the dish like that. And they're beautiful and they're small, but they, they pack a punch. They're very pungent. And then we're going to finish just with a little so stream. Of a little leave. Exactly. A little stream of olive oil, just like that. And then we're done. Well, this is a, a spectacular dish. Let me place it right here so everybody can see it and see how spectacular it is. I am extremely honored that you actually took the time to come and join us. Thanks I love the me. way you explain things. Not only you're passionate, and this is what makes a great chef. It's not just having a great name restaurant, but it's the interaction that you have with food. You want to make the food great. You feel it in your heart. You feel it in your passion. I am so proud to hear. Uh, the first time that we met, you actually used to watch my show. That's that means right. a great deal to yeah. me. To all of you at home, uh, make sure you join us next week. We'll come back with brand new recipes and a whole cadre of chefs to show you exactly how to turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Thank you very much. Ciao a tutti. You.